Good evening YouTube, Ian here from Cool Ice Charge Case and Power Supplies. Hope you're keeping safe and well um, and enjoying the, the world wherever you are in it, uh, be it sunshine or raining. Well, weather in the UK has been a bit up and down unfortunately these last few days, so that signals the end of summer for us in the UK. Anyway, I've got something else I'd like to show you. Um, it's another little uh, power supply controlling device by my good friend Steve Smith again, XY Gax. This one uh, suits the Altec 48 volt rectifier. Um, that's a very nice unit actually. It's available in 2K, so 2000 watt and 3000 watt format. Um, basically, it's very powerful. It can be controlled and programmed via CAN bus, in fact. So you can use an Aussie, excuse me, an interary computer such as like a, a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino to. Uh, send and receive commands from it. Um, so on certain units you can set the, the output, well on all the units actually you can set the output voltage of them and obviously the current limitations as well because a lot of the e-bike guys are using them as uh, chargers for their life e-cells um, and some are actually putting three or even four of these units in series to get serious voltage out of them. Um, because basically the voltage can be programmed from 46.5 to 57.5 volts, I think. So from my perspective, where I use them in the radio control fraternity, uh, there's a couple of chargers that can take 48, 49 volts or 50, up to 50 volts. Um, and these power supplies are ideal for that. The Originally it was the iCharger Duo 4010 and the Revo Electric's PL8 Duo, well the PL8, including their touch and the PL8 V2. Unfortunately, with the recent news of Revo Electrics shutting up shop, those chargers are also going to disappear, but they still make good candidates for this power supply. Anyway, without going on too much, the idea of this video is to go through this new little control board that Steve has made up for me. Again, it's basically using an ESP uh, module, which is loosely based on the Arduino stuff. I'm still getting my head around it. Combine, it combines then a the CAN bus shield kind of thing, or in, it combines then obviously the CAN bus data, or data, the components needed to obviously communicate with the CAN bus. Um, and obviously then it's got a voltage regulator on board as well, which can take anywhere from up to 60 volts, I think Steve said, 60 to 12 volts, I think it should work quite well, or 60 to 25. Um, so basically it's an all-in-one self-contained board that allows me to log in to it, it automatically detects the serial number of the LTEC because it's obviously using the CAN bus so it logs in pulls the serial number off the unit pulls it out stores that and then of course then allows you then to set the output voltage of it and on pre-revision pre free units allows you to do so permanently and on revision free and above um, sorry, uh, yeah, revision free and above allows you to do it permanently and pre-revision free allows you to obviously set a current voltage and when the um, the unit then powers up, the LTEC then obviously is told what voltage to do and it's logged in every 8 to 10 seconds as required to maintain that voltage. We then from there then with the ESP, there is obviously the ability to have Wi-Fi uh, monitoring of the, the status of the voltage output and the amp draw. So in this case then with the ESP, Steve has set it up so that it can either be a standalone Wi-Fi access point. So in which case then if you don't put your uh, net home network or office network username and SSID password in it and stuff, it will then obviously just act as an access point and you can obviously log into it with a hat with a wireless device and monitor it that way via the URL. Or if you give it the details so it logs on, it will then log on to your internet at home, which is what mine one's going to do in a minute. And then obviously then you can access it via URL again and then monitor from there. Um, another little side bit from that, we've obviously incorporated a couple of inputs and outputs on it, which we can do more with perhaps as time goes by. But one thing we've done now, and this was for my own personal benefit, but is going to be quite handy for other people. Um, I've created, we've got Steve to create another little controller board, if you like, another little separate smaller board, I'll show it to you in a bit, that is basically the on and off switch for a high power contactor. Um, 
So basically what happens is when these units power up, these LTECs, they kind of have what they call a walk-in, which is where the voltage obviously starts off lower and then it walks in to its set voltage or the voltage it's going to go to. So it does so slowly, at which point you don't perhaps particularly want anything connected to it. And in my case, if I'm using the pre-revision free units, which automatically default to 53.5 volts off the top of my head, I don't want my 48 volt only chargers connected to that until the power supply is ultimately given the 48, 49 volts because it could cause problems. So the programming has been done such that the, uh, L, the, the contactor is kept open until the, uh, the, the, the programming side of things that Steve has done detects that the power supply has completed its walking period reached the voltage the set voltage that it's set to at which point then it then clicks the relay into place and then obviously then the dc output flows from the power supply to the rc charger or whatever in this case whatever you want to power with it so that's another little safety feature and obviously a feature that i wanted which makes this unit more usable for me so without further ado i won't talk too much further this way i'm going to have to stop this video start another one then where i can show you the unit and obviously then i'll annotate it at the back with my voice which you know, whether you like to hear it or not hopefully you'll enjoy what i have to show you and what i tell you see you in a minute bye hello youtube back again right now let me show you a couple of things first so we've got the main board so we've got the little esp and it tells us on it esp hyphen 12f so that obviously gives us our wi-fi We've obviously then got the CAN bus information. We've uh, we've got a USB there for the serial monitoring as well. So the serial monitor works if you want to connect that to your PC. And obviously I did say, I did actually miss the name. This is the CAN Dice by XY Gax version 1.01. So basically that's the main board. We've obviously got the couple of connection points there. So up this end, we've got the, the CAN connections. So ground, can L, can H, and obviously they then connect via JSTXH to my PCB that I have, nice and simple. We then obviously added obviously on the recent PCB run a DC output on the two pin JSTXH, and that then comes across obviously then to the board, negative and positive. If you're wiring this from a kit, please do make sure that you get the negative and the positive the right way round. Um, with any kits, I am looking obviously to supply these and I will do my best to mark it to obviously help people avoid any issues. But obviously, the, if you get these wrong, it will fry the board um, and you don't want that. That'll be a real bad day. And that's obviously not covered under any warranties, I'm afraid. So that will be written in the instructions, which as I go along, there may be addendums to it. Likewise, with this video, as and when things come up, I may obviously add bits in the comments or create another video. So that's your main board. Obviously then, as you can see, I've then obviously got the little board that I mentioned. That's the little contactor board, or the contactor switch board. So then that obviously allows then to switch a much higher power connect contact connector contactor. And in this case, this one's a Chinese one and it's a 50 amp contactor. And you can hear that really clunk when it goes. So that'll be quite interesting to hear. The other things I've got connected, um, one on the lines, I've got a couple of buttons. I've got the yellow for just a soft reset and the red for the hard reset. I will be providing these kind of thing with the kits. Um, what we're finding is with this, you, we power it up and then when it, after a couple of seconds, you just have to press the yellow, the little blue light on the ESP flashes, and then of course then this boots up. Um, it's not booting up off straight off the bat for some reason, but these are firmware updatable. So if we figure out what's going wrong with that one, we are with this run of boards, we can also change that and also push a firmware update and we can do that wirelessly for you as well so that'll be quite handy and um, so we've got the little push buttons and then we've got the little oled display now this is quite good so if if your computer isn't obviously attached to the unit and mine isn't at this moment in time this little unit this little display is going to tell us everything what's going on so without further ado don't worry about my pliers that's just there keeping my buttons in place because with the wires that will try and flick off somewhere else and i've got my voltmeter just connected which i'm going to turn on now in fact so let's put that to dc volts obviously there's nothing there at the moment and of course then the ac is off ac in so let me 
trying I'm trying to keep everything in one place so I can actually show you all what's going on. So basically what's going to happen is now when I turn it on and I can do it now and in fact it's not while the power supply is going to come on and the voltage is going to build there's going to be nothing obviously displayed because the contactor isn't working or hasn't been switched on because the canned ice isn't going. So if I press the yellow button that's just going to reset it and now do we want to reset? No, nope, not yet. That's if you need to. Right, okay, now we're logging in. It's going to get the serial number. There it is. So there's the serial number of the LTEC that is connected to, and it would change depending on which one you got. It's now going to connect to my Wi-Fi. Here it is. And here we go. So now, oh, here we go. So it started at 53 volts. It's now going down, and it's now ramping up to, I've set it to 49 volts from memory. So that is going to go all the way up to 49 volts. Now this is obviously the slow walk-in we've set it to, and there's a reason we've done it. And at the, in the background, I can show you, it's also now starting to, so there is the web address for this unit, and there is the voltages and the displays coming on that. That will be populated in a minute. So let me come back to this. Right, so now we're at 49 volts. At some stage, you're going to hear the contactor click. I found with this, with this particular power supply, it takes a few more seconds longer than normal. Whereas the couple of the others, it seems to click in a little bit more. And it's all to do with this walk-in period. Um, this is quite a newer version. This is a revision 9. Um, so obviously the, the walk-ins might be a little bit different on the later revisions. But as you can see, the LTEC is now outputting 49 volts. There's no current draw on it because unfortunately I've not got a load set up for it. Is the contactor going to click any minute? Normally it makes me jump. Hopefully I won't. <laughs> I won't drop my phone in the process. It always seems to take longer when you're waiting for it. Need a little light on there actually, but it does tell me obviously when the blue light comes on this ESP, that means it's up to speed and it's gonna click it in. Any moment, I know it does take a little bit longer as I said a minute ago. This is all to do with the CAN bus data that's obviously coming back and forth to the unit. It's obviously waiting to make sure that the power supply is where it needs to be or where we've set it to. Here we go. There you go. Now the contact has clicked in. So we've got the 49 volts, 49.17. There you go. And we've got 49 here. And obviously then the little blue LED then on the ESP is on, meaning that the thing is working. And there we go. Um... Yeah, essentially, this is what we've got. So, obviously, if I come back to this, is obviously on my PC because it's connected to my home network. So, this is live. So, as you can see, the information then is obviously just updating itself. You've got the voltage across the top in red, amps along the bottom line at the bottom. And here, so we've got voltage in, 235 volts AC, output, 49 volts DC. Maximum power current, 2,000 watts. No output on the amps. Temperature in, 26, I think that is. Yeah, temperature out. Faults, PS on, no, nope, everything's fine. Then on this side, set voltage, 48.9. Max current, 30.5. Max power, 100%. Right, so if I can do this, let me click uh, settings. Right, so now. I can set the voltage. So say we're at, we're at 49 volts now, aren't we, at the moment. Let's change that to 52. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've put 52 in the box. I'm not changing the current, I'm just changing the voltage. Commit. That's obviously gonna whirl away. Yep, as you can see. Anything thing we have to do now, we have to get rid of that. We have to come back to that. Okay, so now the voltage has changed. And there we go. Obviously, then the voltage on the output has changed as well. Now, the other option is we can obviously go to program, click that, and now that will set that 53 volts as the permanent voltage then for this particular power supply. Because obviously, this is a revision free or above the program V3. That is then obviously now going to set 52 volts. So effectively, then you could disconnect this canned ice unit and set it, but I'm not going to do that. 
I want to now change the voltage again. I'm going to go to 48.9. There we go. And I'm going to do commit. I then do have to get rid of the excess bit off there. And the voltage, and there we go. The voltage has just changed. By the time I've swung the thing around, the voltage has changed back to the 49 that we had before. Let's go another way. And I can obviously, by clicking the program V3, I could make the 49 volts permanent, which is handy. Or let's go to this. Let's change it to 45. I think it will go to 45. Click commit. Come back. And it should roll down. There we go. Hasn't refreshed this yet, but it, well, there we go. We've done it on my voltmeter before it obviously updated on the display. So there we go. As you can see, we're now outputting 45 volts from the from the LTEC via the canned ice. And then obviously now the details are going to start populating. So we're at now 45 volts, and every few seconds, it's then going to create another dot, which I think is going to start this end. There we go. And it's just going to keep updating. And obviously, unfortunately, like I said, I haven't got no load on there. I need to get one of the uh, one of the RC charges on it. But I am going to put the voltage back where I need it. In fact, so I'm going to go settings. I'm going to go forty-eight point nine. Commit because that's where I need it to go, and it's going to go back to. Sorry if I'm swinging the camera around a bit quick. The voltmeter, yep, voltmeter's changed, and then this should update. Here we go. There we go. Perfect. And obviously, then the contactor is obviously still on because uh, my voltmeter is upstream of the contactor. So, there we go. It makes a nice little unit, as you can see. Um, obviously, that little board there is separate. The little contactor controller switch, if, if you want to call it that, is separate. I've just bolted it on the corner to make it easier for me. Um, so, yeah, you've got a few wires going in, a few wires going out. It's an absolutely cracking little board. The only thing I had to do, I just, I just had to cut the notch out the corner here. A little bit of an oversight with the USB port here. It wasn't at the end, so I've cut the notch out on the first batch of seven I've got here, which will shortly be up on eBay at some stage. But there you go. If you want to control the output and monitor the output, here we go, of an LTEC. Here we go, and there you go. So there's the serial number of my unit, there's the IP address, and it's obviously updating with everything. So great. And so here's another board. I've got a couple of others. So obviously that the, the board that is obviously running, as I mentioned before, that one is obviously set up to, to connect to my wireless at home. Um, brand new boards, they won't be programmed like that originally. So when you first connect it, you'll need to keep your eye on the little OLED, um, and it will actually tell you um what uh, url it's assigned itself if you like what address and also then i think from memory i've got the the, the password uh, written down which i'll obviously put on the instructions which will allow you to get in for the first time and obviously then fill in the information obviously for your uh, wi-fi details and everything else so this is obviously a, a brand new board or another new board if you like that i just got ready to date and there you go Absolutely perfect. My electronics man, Steve, he's a freaking amazing man when it comes to this stuff. Um, he's enjoyed doing this little project. Um, and I certainly enjoy these little toys that he sends me to offer to people. Brilliant. Well, as normal, thanks for watching. Any questions, please ask. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.